The 2025 Honda NT 1100 may appear to have received only minor updates, but these refinements significantly enhance its performance, versatility, and appeal. What's new? More mid-range torque. A boost in mid-range power delivers smoother acceleration and a more responsive ride. Electronic suspension. Replacing the non-adjustable components from the 2022 to 2024 models, the new Showa E-Ray semi-active suspension, available on the DCD-equipped version, offers preset preload settings for solo, pillion, or loaded riding, and adaptive damping tie to the rider modes. Sharper DCD system. The dual-clutch transmission is now more intuitive, making gear shifts smarter and smoother. Inertial measurement unit. IMU, this tech upgrade provides better traction control, or torque control, as Honda calls it, enhancing safety and stability. Improved screen mechanism. No more wrestling with the windscreen. The revised design allows on-the-go adjustments, although pulling it up from the lowest position can still be tricky for taller riders. Larger panniers. An added inch of width translates to four extra liters of storage, enough to comfortably stow a full face helmet. On the road, the updates transform the NT1100 into a more dynamic machine. The improved suspension options adapt seamlessly to varying loads and road conditions, while enhanced throttle response and smarter rider aids minimize disruptions during spirited rides. These changes make the NT1100 a more confident performer on twisty roads and long-distance adventures alike. Touring versatility. Honda continues to position the NT1100 as a touring mainstay. Much like its predecessors, the NT700V Deauville and ST1300 Pan-European. It has been Europe's best-selling tourer for years, and the 2025 model solidifies its place at the top. The increased carrying capacity and user-friendly windscreen adjustments make it more practical, while its sharper, sportier feel caters to riders who enjoy a bit of excitement on the road. While the NT1100 isn't a powerhouse, it's no slouch either. It handles spirited riding with ease and maintains its reputation as a sensible yet fun sports tourer. Ride quality and braking. Previous NT1100 models, 2022 to 2024, offered only preload adjusters, which were great if you understood how to use them but lacked versatility without damping adjusters. The 2025 model addresses this with the Showa ERA system, which features three preload presets, solo, pillion, or loaded, and linked damping adjustments for rain, urban, and tour modes. This setup significantly improves ride quality and adaptability. Final thoughts. The 2025 Honda NT 1100 isn't just an update, it's a polished evolution. By addressing previous shortcomings and adding thoughtful improvements, Honda has made an already popular touring machine even better. Whether you're cruising on highways or tackling winding roads, the NT 1100 delivers a balanced mix of comfort, practicality, and fun. Fine-tuned performance. Exploring the 2025 Honda NT 1100 S updates. Customizable user modes, tailored to your ride. The 2025 Honda NT 1100 offers two customizable user modes, giving riders full control over electronic settings. This includes tweaking preload levels and selecting a damping setup that suits your riding style. For instance, I found the default rider preload slightly underwhelming, impacting steering precision and ground clearance. Meanwhile, the rider slash pillion setting felt oversprung, overwhelming the damping response. Fortunately, you can fine tune the rider preload to find a sweet spot, less than the default for two up use, but more supportive for solo riding. Soft setting, best suited for gentle wet weather riding. This setting, paired with rain mode, feels overly floaty for anything more spirited. Medium setting, a well rounded option for solo rides offering a good balance between comfort and control, especially compared to the previous generation. Hard setting. Too rigid for solo rides without luggage but may shine under heavy, two-up touring conditions. Fine-tuning damping in user modes might provide an even better solution. While the system doesn't deliver the magic carpet feel of higher-end setups like Olean's ERS 2.0, it's a significant improvement over the older NT1100. The suspension occasionally feels like it reacts a bit slower than ideal, likely due to the Showa system's underlying spring-slash-damping setup for its algorithms. 
Even so, it strikes a better balance between plush comfort and firm support. Enhanced braking with smoother ABS. Thanks to the addition of an inertial measurement unit, IMU, the ABS system is less intrusive and more refined. Although the hardware remains unchanged, good but not exceptional, it's more than adequate for the NT1100S touring focus purpose. Engine, more torque, more engagement. Honda's parallel twin engine has always been reliable and approachable, but in the past, it could feel underwhelming compared to more performance-oriented rivals, especially when loaded with a pillion or luggage. The 2025 model addresses this with a 7% increase in torque, delivered earlier and peaking at 5,500 RPM, 750 RPM sooner than before. The difference is palpable. This added grunt transforms the NT1100S character, giving it extra punch right where you need it, from throttle input to overtaking or powering out of a corner. The revised airbox inlet, velocity stacks, and higher compression pistons not only boost torque, but also add a satisfying intake growl. The result is a bike that feels livelier and more rewarding, even if it still leans toward practicality over outright excitement. The 2025 Honda NT-1100S refinements bring noticeable improvements to suspension performance, braking smoothness, and engine response. While it may not deliver cutting-edge sophistication in every area, these updates make the NT-1100 a more capable, engaging, and enjoyable sports tourer for a wide range of riders. Also new on the powertrain is a revised oil sensor for the DCT option a small but decisive tweak that makes shifts near on seamless by making the oil pressure required to activate the twin clutches more precise for the conditions. Before, Honda say, the information presented could be delivered fractionally too slow, by which time overall conditions have changed and the clutch slash gear actuation might not be optimal. We didn't experience anything to suggest they've not got it sorted now. Often, the only telltale is the gear position readout on the dash or the discrete metallic clunk as the gears shift, or a change in exhaust tone. Up or down the gearbox, there's no weird lag, surges, or brake and drive. Equally, the lean angle data from the IMU prevented it from making less than ideal mid-corner shifts. D-mode is still weird and hurries through the ratios far too fast. It's in fifth by 30 miles per hour, with the long, almost overdrive six selected before 40 miles per hour. But the sport mode's three levels work as you'd hope, with setting three holding on to RPM and gears in the most aggressive way. Most of the time, S1 or S2 deliver enough power, but also keep the revs at a sensible level rather than holding on past peak torque for no reason. There are up slash down paddles on the left switch gear to intervene in automatic mode at will, to preempt an overtake rather than rely on kick down when you open the throttle, say, or you can opt to use these in manual mode.